My name is Award, and I am a patient partner. Will was such an amazing individual, and he had so much life and light in him. Um, despite all of his medical complexities and everything that, that brought to him, he really lived life to the fullest. My son Will was such a unique person. While he had many significant physical challenges that were visibly apparent, he had such an inner strength and peace to him, as well as a, just a joy that radiated. Being with my family, friends, and my dogs makes me happy. I like being surrounded by people and doing fun things like going to Red Sox games or concerts. It gets frustrating when others underestimate me, but it does give me an opportunity to educate them that people are more than their physical appearance. Will had a, a wonderful way of sort of quietly inviting people in to, to come closer, right? To get to know him, both physically and, and metaphorically. Uh, and understand that there's a lot going on within Will that has nothing to do with the wheelchair or the ventilator. So he, he had a great ability to say, this is who I am and these are just things that, you know, help me get around and do what I need to do. But there's so much more um, that he's interested in, his humor, his, his passions, um, that have nothing to do with these physical things around him. He was incredibly patient and he actually really appreciated people that took time to listen to him and he formed incredible bonds um, in unique ways. My name is Erin and my son Will lived with excellent myotubular myopathy. XLMTM is um, it's a disorder where you have a genetic issue where you're not producing a protein called myotubularin. It appears to be a critical component in telling the muscles that uh, they need to contract so then the patients aren't able to contract the muscles and produce any kind of strength. XLMTM is uh, and can often be very profoundly physically impactful um, and requires uh, an intense level of support uh, and care and treatment day to day, hour to hour, even minute to minute. When we tell other people about Will that maybe haven't met him or didn't get a chance to meet him, we say, oh, he had a muscle disease. I'm not always sure if, if it really translates that they understand exactly what we're talking about here. Just the uh, overall inability to, to move independently and importantly to breathe independently really impacts literally every second of the day in terms of making sure that he's got what he needs to breathe and, and to make it through his day. been married for 20 years and uh, we have five sons so life is pretty hectic. One of the most common questions I get asked is how do you do all this and one of my first responses is I don't do it alone and my husband is really my best ally and partner in all of this uh, especially with two kids that require 24-7 uh, medical monitoring and care and not always having the nursing support that we need, that means that David and I have to come in and, and fill in those gaps. When I was pregnant with Reed, we didn't really see signs early on that anything was wrong. He looked good on the scans at first. It was about in the third, the beginning of the third trimester that we noticed I was getting a lot of amniotic fluid and it's a condition called polyhydramnios. We also noticed around that time that Reed had what's called club foot, and he also had low fetal movement. So that was another clue, but nothing definitive. When Reed was born, it was very clear that something was wrong. 
These patients are very frequently diagnosed at birth, you know, or they may be diagnosed or at least suspected to have uh, significant muscle disease before birth because they're not moving around that much in utero. They, their muscles are being built wrong and it's really all their muscles that are being built wrong. And so it's pretty frequent for them to need respiratory support immediately after birth so that a half of the patients can die before they're two years old. Um, and then the other half of patients, it's a little bit harder to predict their lifespan, but, but many of them are very severely debilitated. There were a lot of traumatic things that happened after Reed was born. I mean, just the fact that he was born um, not breathing on his own was really scary. I thought to myself, you know, I, I've got to stop crying. I just want to spend this time with him. Like, he might not experience anything of the world except my smile or, or how I talk to him or sing to him in this moment. And I really just asked God, I was like, please, God, let me not mourn for my son while he's still here. And uh, when he's gone, then I'll, then I'll mourn for him, but, but not while he's still here. So almost two years after Reed was born, uh, we unexpectedly got pregnant again. And one of the questions that the geneticist asked me when I was pregnant was if we wanted to do an amniocentesis to see if the baby had the same condition. I told her, I said, you know, I don't really think that's necessary um, because I know that now that I'm having another baby boy that he has a 50% chance of having myotubular myopathy. Uh, but he has a 100% chance of being loved. And uh, so let's just prepare for any possible contingencies. XLMTM is currently treated supportively. So what that means is that you recognize the patient needs ventilatory support, you provide ventilatory support, you recognize they're not getting enough uh, calories in their day, you provide you know, a tube that allows them to uh, get more calories, things like that. I think sometimes people assume that since Reed and Paley have the same muscular condition that they're pretty much the same, but they're not. They're totally different. Reed is more of our prankster and um, he doesn't like doing schoolwork. He's pretty feisty when it when it comes to doing what he doesn't want to do. And uh, Paley, on the other hand, is more of this very sweet kind of compliant uh, kid. Uh, who loves doing schoolwork, he loves to read. In fact, sometimes he, he's just blown us away with how uh, amazing his memory is and, and how he thinks about the world. I guess you could say, I don't believe in lost causes, I believe in found causes. In 2009, um, the community put together its first family conference. We just had such a wonderful opportunity to meet the Wood family and Marie, our partner, our friend, and her son Reed was such a joy. He was hilarious and he had this ability to have this smile impact you in ways that you just can't imagine. Um, he oftentimes would reach out for you and hold your hand and not let you go. And really, he's done that to my heart. He, he is somebody that will always be part of my life experience. To be able to watch Marie and the way she cares for all of her children. We had this vision that we wanted to continue forward and support the conferences as much as possible. And a few years in, we realized that we really need to provide some structure, become a formal nonprofit. So MTM CNM Family Connection, we're a nonprofit that supports families living with excellent MTM and other central nuclear myopathies. And we like to aim to provide opportunities to connect with research, resources, and life enhancing relationships. And it really grew out of a grassroots effort from the community to put together conferences. So not only to bring together family members, but also researchers and medical providers in the field. One thing that I'm, I'm really proud of with our nonprofit is we've made the, the patient voice and the actual families a keystone of, of what matters. I am very hopeful for the future for this disease. 
I talk about my tubular myopathy to people much more than I did 10 years ago. There are more investigators, there are more you know, business people, there are more everybody that are interested in this disease uh, than I would have expected at this stage. Um, and it's, it's because it's been identified as a disease where if we do everything right, we have the potential to really help these kids in a very useful way. Three months ago, at age 15, we lost Reed due to complications from his disease. In a way, it's kind of paradoxical in the moment that we lost Reed, because as heartbreaking as it was, I also had this incredible sense of peace, because I knew that I had kept the promise that I made to him when he was a baby, and that he knew that I was by his side up until the very end fighting for him and that I never gave up on him and I never took the easy way out. And he knew that I loved him. The suddenness of Reed's passing really hit all of us and hit the community as well. And that, that's really hard to know the impact that when Will passed and then when Reed passed, that these were boys that family members loved with the greater community. It reminds us how important our connections are to support one another. It reminds us how important the work is to keep moving forward so that others don't have to lose their loved ones. I think sometimes when, when people have something that happens that, that they didn't expect or they didn't want, they, they can get kind of into that mode of, why did this happen to me? I had a why me moment after Reed was born, but it was not a complaint, it was more like, why, why did I get to be so lucky? Why did I get to be the one to have this amazing, beautiful person entrusted to me? As we go through these life moments without Reed, it can be challenging because I feel sad that he's not with us and I feel sad that he's not experiencing those things but I also felt that I didn't want to take away from what his brothers are accomplishing and, and what they're going through and, and achieving in life by continually grieving over the fact that he's gone and uh, so on the morning of Blaze's graduation I just thought to myself you know what I know Reed's looking down and cheering his brothers on and he must be so happy right now and when we got to the graduation venue, there were reeds by the front door and there were reeds all over the building and we took pictures by the reeds and I felt like it was Reed saying to me again, yes, mom, it's okay to cry and it's okay to be sad, but it's also okay to be happy when good things happen. <laughs> 